welcome to Watch, Think, and Act. I'm your host, Reverend Mary Yoli Moore, and the name of my church is Living Sacrifice Outreach Ministry. Welcome to part two of part one, and the title of our show is The Illegal U.S. Border Crossings. But before we get started, we'd like to invite the presence of God to be here with us because the information that we have here is very, very dark, in my opinion, and inexcusable. So let me introduce to you first my wonderful guest, and I'll start with Mr. Tejas. Mr. Tejas, welcome. Thank you. And please uh, tell us uh, who you are and what do you do. Okay, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm retired. I'm a CPA. Uh, I'm involved in several businesses here in El Paso. Uh, I am also uh, active in, in the political environment with the Republican Party as a county chair and also at this part of the state Republican Executive Committee. Thank you so much, Mr. Tejas. And, of course, the lovely one and only <laughs> Irene Armendariz Jackson. Please let us know what you do and uh, what, what your thoughts are for El Paso. Well, I'm very thankful to be here. Thank you again, Mary Yoli. I am a native of El Paso. I am a mother, a wife, and a grandmother of five beautiful oh, grandbabies. Wonderful. Very excited to see them this on Saturday. I'm going to visit them. But I'm also the founder and president of the Border Security Coalition. Oh, that's wonderful. And our last wonderful guest is Pastor Alfredo Sanchez. And I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit about his church. Plus, if you do me the service and the kindness to read a Bible verse and lead us in prayer. Sure. Uh, Pastor Alfredo Sanchez serving the community here in El Paso locally. Uh, for the past 35 years, uh, our, the church is located at 3210 Alameda Avenue. The name of the church is Iglesia de Poder y Santidad, number 915-549-4554. And we're going to get to read here in Daniel. Uh, one of my favorite uh, prayers, Daniel 9, and we're going to read verse 8 and 9. O oh Lord. To us be not, be not a confusion of faith to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Lord, we pray you give us wisdom. Your grace come upon us, Lord, and have mercy of us. Have mercy of our nation and the world. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. Well, I'd like to go ahead and start uh, by informing you what's happening as of May 14, 2024. We have uh, Chief Border Patrol Robert Garcia, who is the chief of the northeastern Swanton sector, which spans across New Hampshire, New York, Vermont, and according to the report that he's given us, there's been a reported dramatic mm -hmm. increase in illegal immigration during the month of April 2024. This is in New Hampshire, Vermont. Vermont is super, super liberal. And of course, New York State. Moving right along, Chris Olivares, the Texas Department of Public Safety spokesman, uh, had a, an issue here where he, they were stormed. The Border Patrol was stormed here in El Paso by illegals trying to get into El Paso. And according to him, he uh, stated that the border policies lack and we need to start enforcing them. Mm -hmm. And so as of February 2024, the New York Times printed an article stating that the illegals are arriving from Texas and they're costing New York City, billions and billions of dollars. And the New York mayor, or the present New York mayor, was quoted as saying that it's time for something to happen because they're going to destroy New York City. Can you imagine destroying New York City? So, according to the Newsweek article that we have here, the uh, illegal children and men and women who are in different hotels across the United States they're all being evicted. These are poor men, women, and children who came to the United States 
with coyotes brought them in, however, thinking they were going to be coming to the, the golden paved streets and they were going to have wonderful lives, and now they're being evicted. It's a horrible, horrible thing that is happening to these poor people. So, likewise, I want to give you uh, breaking news. Now, listen up, people. According to President Biden, he has decided to sign an executive order, uh, and the plans are to finalize the migrants limiting how many migrants can come in here and seek asylum? Well, the mayors of all the border cities and the mayors all over the United States are all excited and they're all planning to go to D.C. and in hopes that this ex executive order will curtail the number of illegals allowed to seek asylums here in the United States. So, all that to ask you, why are they using Men, women, and children as pawns, taking them back and forth. These are human beings. These are souls. To us as Christians, these are souls. We, of course, the laws say they are illegals, but to us, they're still children of God. So let me start with uh, my uh, guest, Adolfo Tejas, and ask him, what do you think is happening to all the men, women, and children who are crossing the border illegally? I know for a fact they are suffering. Uh, they were in Mexico, which is a socialist, communist country, and now they're back in, now here in the United States. I mean, they went from the pan into the fire. What do you think, uh, Mr. Tejas? Thank you. Uh, I, I've got a lot of concerns about what's, what's occurring and what the impact is on our country. These people are entering. They're entering... I illegally, they're being released, and they're infiltrating all of our country, not just the border. Yes. All the cities that called themselves sanctuary cities before, yes. today they're complaining because they can't handle it. And those are big <laughs> cities. <laughs> New York is the example that you were talking about. But I was visiting with a, a, a politician out of Mexico City just a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that that, that I was told was that the cartels clearly are getting stronger and stronger. We have car the cartels are getting stronger in the United States also. They moved in here as part of what's occurring with this immigration. But what I was told was that the cartels in Mexico are recruiting. They want young people by the age of 14 working for them. Mm. And, and when you think about what they're getting paid as to what their opportunities are at that age, they're they're picking up more and more young people at 14. But the second part of that is the life expectancy, the average life expectancy of those kids that are starting at 14 is five years. Now, some of those kids are coming into this country. Are they working for the cartels also? Are they going to use the violence or be involved in the violence that they have in their own country? I think these are risks that we need to be very concerned about because they're infiltrating not just our communities, but our schools and dealing with our children. Oh. And and that puts our children at risk because all of us want a little bit more money sometimes and children will do very foolish things so sad. Uh, uh, instead of walking away from the temptations that these kids are bringing with them. Yes, yes. Irene, what do you think is happening to the men and women in, in, in the United States who have crossed the border illegally? I, I feel so sorry for them. Well, let me tell you first that, first of all, not everybody is a, children, a child of God. John... 112 specifically says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, we want to make sure that we what we say is biblical. And so, yes, we are very concerned about their souls. But as a mother and now a grandmother, I'm very concerned on who is associating with my children. We actually made the decision to take our youngest, who will turn 17 uh, in, a, in next month, um, out of school, and we're homeschooling her. Just because, safety. yes, because what Adolfo said is very true. We tell our children, stand up for the Lord, uh, be brave, and and then what do we do? Even if our, in our churches, our pastors are not even speaking against what is happening and diluting. I mean, the foundation of this country is a Judeo-Christian foundation. Yes. And what's happening is we're getting people that they come from countries that Judeo-Christian values are not primary uh, values. And so we're bringing in, we're also importing the world's poverty. Yes. And so it's having an economic uh, in, uh, impact on the taxpayer. Let's remember there's no such thing as government funding. We are the government funding, whether it's local, 
state or national. So we've seen an increase of ex expenses when going to, I mean, you're saying they're, they're kicking them out, but they've been paying billions of dollars to house all these people that are yes. coming in. And what's sad, a lot of them, we have over 85,000 children that have disappeared. Now, we can't fool ourselves, Marioli. This has happened in our nation before, maybe not through unaccompanied minors, but with American children and the justice system when they these children bring up these um, attacks and violations against them. They are laughed at, they're dismissed, yes. they're deemed crazy. So why are we surprised? And now we have politicians in our, in our own community um, that don't want to protect children. No. And during the last administration, our representative along with a representative with, uh, in Michigan and, and uh, in San Antonio sent a letter to the then Homeland Security Secret Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, demanding that they suspend the rapid DNA of children, mm -hmm. even though the data had already showed that over 30% of those children were not coming in with their biological parents. And we talk a lot about the separation of families. That's part of the protocol to save these children. Yes. They have to separate them from the people that are trafficking them trafficking them. And not only that, they weren't with their biological parents and they already had a history of coming in with another set with of another parents. Child. So these children are being brought over just for the adult benefit and then sending all the for way the back pedophiles. to come again. Pastor Sanchez, what's your view? Yes, uh, I'm going to have to go back to the, to the scriptures uh, on lamentations because uh, of chapter 4, verse 12, because it's very uh, important that the people once again know that we're, we're here not hating. We're here with justice and mercy because mm -hmm. that's what the Word of God says. But these people, the, the evildoers, you know, they, they seem they don't have no soul. They don't have no conscience, conscience. to hurt the, the little babies. Uh, even if we go back uh, to what Hamas did on October 7th, what the Palestinians or the protests are doing, uh, ignorant, people ignorant. They're being hijacked. Many, many of them are evil possessed, demon possessed, and they came through our gates. I have to read it again. Yeah. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world who have not believed that the adversary, the enemy, should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. I know a lot of us Americans, we wouldn't have even imagined that in four years or less than four years, we could be in this position. We could have never imagined four years of glory and the glory of God because Trump is not my idol. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's my savior, but he has put a man that his descendants have honored Jerusalem, have honored Israel, and that's why he has those biblical uh, standards that he wants to live by them and put the people to live by them. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests they have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. There's a lot of people, the little ones, young ladies, who are just. They haven't heard of no one. That they're being raped. They're going to be sold to the, to the marketplace of prostitution. And that hurts the, 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 the soul of fear. People that fear God and for last. This is a prophecy that a lot of people don't understand. Revelation 9, 3. And there came out of the smoke, Lucas, upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. People, you have not seen anything yet. When the wrath of God is going to be here on earth, the wrath of God, right now, it's not the wrath of God. When the church goes with the Lord, the wrath of God, if right now you see the, the caravanas, millions and millions, 
And they have power. They are given power. They have more power. They have more money than the veterans. They're on the streets. They have more power staying in luxury hotels, giving them money, uh, Medicare, whatever. But the time of the, the wrath of God. The illegals. 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 I, I have We're talking about caravanas. Yes. Yeah. The illegals. But they're moved by the, by the carteles. It's all planned. So we, we the people, we the believers, we must for real pray in the name of the program. Watch, think, and act. Focus. Watch, think, and act. That's that's our work to do. Pray, keep watching, and keep acting. Amen. But here in the Bible, it's going to be terrible. Caravanas have been compared to the Lucas because they're harming our nation and they're harming our citizens and they're harming our children. Amen. With so much evil. So, Mr. Tejas, what do you would you vote for an elected official that is spending millions of dollars on illegals instead of helping its citizens here in the United States, especially in El Paso, Texas? It amazes me that anybody would vote for somebody that doesn't have a respect for the law. We've got too many elected officials, especially in this community, and not just from this community, but our, our U.S. representative, that disrespect the law. They're trying to do what they want because they want power, they want control, they want more money. I, I would hold it against anybody that... It disappoints me, I should say, when people see what's occurring, know who's leading this, and then votes, votes for them again. That is wrong. People need to think about it. They need to know what's occurring and, and find people that will support what's right, not their selfish desires. Yeah, that, that's so incredibly correct. And so voting is a responsibility then. Ex exactly, it's a responsibility. And our voting numbers in this community are, are terrible. They're so low, it's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Our people need to get out and vote. They need to know something about who's running for office, and they need to vote for the people that, that have a respect for everybody and respect, respect for God and understand what we need to do to go forward. Amen. Irene, uh, so elected officials are spending... Billions of dollars all over the United States for illegals, kicking out veterans from their hospitals, from their homes, and uh, children. I mean, illegals, like Pastor Sanchez said, are priority in the eyes of the present administration. What do you think about that, Irene, spending all that money? Would you vote for an elected official? I've never. I don't take that? responsibility for who's in office right now. I've never voted for them. And what we have to understand as American citizens, especially here in El Paso, is that our vote is very powerful. So I'm encouraging everybody to use the power of their vote. If you don't like what's happening, then it is the definition of insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yes. So if you have voted for the same people here in our community over and over again, you need to really question yourself and see who stands for biblical values, who stands pro-life to protect the babies in the womb of their mothers, for marriage between a man and a woman, because that's what concerns us, the biblical values, what honors God. This is not about honoring any political party. That's this right. is about honoring God. And so if you have been voting a certain way, and people do for over 60 years here in El Paso, we need to make sure that we understand as a community uh, who we're voting for. And it's very true what Adolfo is saying. It's less than 4% of the people here in El Paso that are uh, choosing what happens to the rest of us. So if you're not registered to vote, you can't complain. But if you're registered to vote and you're not using the power of your vote, it's time to activate. Yes, and what amazes me also, Irene, is that a lot of people asked our governor, for example, here Abbott, Texas, our Texas Governor Abbott, 
Uh, they said, send us the illegals. We'll take them. Now Eric they're, Adams did. Now they're, so who was that that said? Eric Adams. Eric Adams accused us of being inhumane and being racist when we started warning. When, because we're, we're in ground zero for the, the lack of border security. Yes. And let's, I mean, it's so ridiculous that this is the first president that has actually unsecured the border. Yes. And we never in the history of the United States has this occurred. And so um, Eric Adams actually called the mayor everybody. Of New York. The, the, no, he's the, oh yes, the mayor of New York, yes. He's the mayor of New York and now he's drowning with illegals and he's saying, we can't take them and anymore. And now they're, he's, they're evicting everybody. Yeah, so it's easy to give an opinion when it's not right at your doorstep and you're not seeing the effects of it. Pastor Sanchez, what would you vote for an elected official who's taken away your hard earned money? No way. I don't vote for no evil people. Uh, we have to vote for God-fearing uh, elected people. You know, we have to vote for them because mm -hmm. if you go according to the scriptures, you can't go wrong. Yeah, no. Amen. There's no way you can't go wrong. With the wisdom of the heavens, yes. mm. the intelligence of the heavens, and being a God-fearing person, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Look at... Uh, our President Trump, former uh, Trump, he didn't have no experience in political, but yet his, uh, his, his roots, you know, there's a, 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 of a Bible that came uh, when he was a very, very young man, a little, little boy, and the tradition has kept on because the fire, you know, of, the, of their, his ancestors helping Jerusalem, helping Israel, now pays off, you know, the God-fearing people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people criticize him by his past, but we all have certain past. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the Lord, when you come to the Lord, right now you can be an evil politician, but if you come to the Lord with really a repentant heart, the Lord will forgive you, and you can make a difference for our city if you repent. Mm -hmm. But if you stay in your own, or old ways, your all evil ways, our country, our state, our city is going to keep suffering. So, uh, Mr. Tejas, why do you think that not enough voters are coming out here in El Paso? I mean, what is it? I mean, they're not registered or what? Not for the Democrats, they don't vote for Democrats or Republicans. I mean, just they don't want to vote, period. There are two issues, and, and one of them is voter registration. We need to get everybody registered to vote. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of people that are registered to vote, but they don't vote. They, they, they don't take their responsibility as a citizen of this country serious. They think that... Uh, that their vote is not going to make a difference. But when you look at elections, we've, act, we've got some elections for, there was one that just occurred for a uh, U.S. representative uh, in one of our congressional districts that touches the, uh, um, the southeast side of, of El Paso. And the difference in the vote for such an important position was like 420 votes, something like that. That's not exact, but it's something in that. So if, if 400 people, 500 people more would have voted, it could have, and, and it could have swung the, the, the election the other way. And this happens with regularity. You look at the election in Canutillo for their bonds. Yes. And, and there was almost nobody that was voting. And I don't remember that difference. But the difference was minimal on, on what the pros, what, who, who passed it and, and who voted against it. And if just a few more people would have voted, th that could have been stopped if that was the desire. Uh, we complain about our debt all the time, but people don't get out there to vote every time there's a bond issue. I, I think there's a lot of apathy. People need to realize, as was said, that the vote is important and we need mm -hmm. to get out and vote. If you don't vote, then you can't complain. The problem is, is not very many people vote. And then you, Everybody you, complains. And, and that's right. And I talk to people and they <laughs> complain and I'm like, well, did you vote? And they all say yes, but I know they all didn't. But yes. <laughs> they need to vote. They need to yes. vote. Now, Irene, uh, speaking about voting, so I, it just boggles my mind. Why would a person who knows that the person that they're going to vote for is voting for open borders, knowing good and well 
that when they have open borders, it's going to cost millions and millions of poor, innocent men and women to be brought into the United States, whether they're staying under asylum or whatever. Everybody knows that the majority of the people that come here illegally are going to end up suffering in the streets. And I know for a fact the elected officials know this. They just do not love the people that are coming in here illegally. These are human beings. Why are people voting for evil men who are destroying poor, innocent people who are, whether they come here illegally or not, their lives are going to be destroyed. Little children are going to be taught to become military men. It's horrible. What do you think? Again, it's the love of money and power. You know, I've been in politics for about seven years, and I had told my husband early on, I said, you know, I'm convinced that it's not even so much the money, it's the power. Yes. And, and we see it on both sides of the aisle, to be honest with you. Um, El Paso has been ignored, and a lot of the, the, the voting is, uh, is so minimal because we haven't done a good job about promoting the elections and educating people. So people walk in literally, Mary Yoli, with a flyer and say, I have to vote for this woman because I'm going to get tacos. 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 That's how ridiculous our voting is here in El Paso. But when I awaken to it, I know when I started finding out, especially the justice system here in El Paso within our family courts and how children are being handed over to their abusers, mm. I, I started crying. And I remember I called and my these mom. these are all illegal and children? I, no, no. These are, these are actually the children from our community. Oh, my goodness. And I, and I said, Mom, where have we been? Where have we been? And so if you look at my voting record, and I think uh, Mr. Tejas, I don't know if he remembers the first time I, I met him, he had my voting record, and I said, you don't have to show it to me. I know it's pathetic. And it's culturally not important, but we have to change. Just yes. like I was awakened on how important it is, especially the church, to vote for the biblical values, I think everybody needs to awaken and say, I want to do my part. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Well, it's that time again. We're running out of time. And so at this point, I'll have to get Pastor Sanchez to come back to our show. But for now, thank you so much for coming. Thank you Mr. very much. Mr. Tejas, Irene, Excuse God bless me. you, and Pastor Sanchez. And this has been Watch, Think, and Act. And I thank you so much for having watched. And I ask you to pray for these illegal, poor illegal men, women, and children that are coming in here. God bless you. And... This is Mary Oli Moore saying goodbye now. God bless you.